Welcome to a documentation special uh, at Acre Media, where I'm going to talk you through installing Commerce 2 on Drupal 8. Um, my name is Josh Miller, and let's go ahead and get started. First, you're going to want to run a composer command, and I'm going to get into the whys and hows and all of that, but let's just go ahead and get that thing started right now. Um, and as that's running in the background, I'm going to talk through a couple of other pieces as to why that needs to be run. But it, ta it can take a while for that to run. So let's just go ahead and get that thing started and then jump in here. Okay, so while that's in, in the background, um, where I found that command was docs.drupalcommerce.org. And I clicked on version 2, and then I clicked on installing. And... Um, that's where you will find uh, all of the documentation you need to get Commerce 2 installed. Now it's, it's possible that you're working with a Drupal 8 that's already existing and you want to add Drupal Commerce and we have a number of commands that you can run to go ahead and add that. But uh, the caveat here for both types of installations, whether it's an existing site or a new site, is that we have uh, a, a requirement on Composer. In the, in the past, you've been able to go to Drupal.org, go down to the bottom, and download a tarball or a zip file of the actual project. You can still download them, but uh, you will be un unable to install it. And the reason that is is because there's a lot of dependencies that Commerce needs. There's a lot of library that Commerce, libraries that Commerce needs that you can't just necessarily go through and pick out, you would essentially be like this manual composer person going through and trying to figure out what things need to be downloaded and where they need to go, etc. Nowadays, all PHP libraries, um, for the most part, need to be installed with Composer. It's basically, uh, for Drupal people, it's the drush of PHP, um, and it will bring in uh, a really difficult thing for us to get at, which is recursive dependencies. And it will also regenerate the autoloader for uh, Drupal and for everything else so that uh, the, the Drupal site can actually run all of the pieces involved in a commerce site. So only commer commerce can only be installed via Composer. And unfortunately, just downloading the tarball won't work. So um, as, as that command is still running uh, in the background, I just want to talk a little bit about why this is so this is so good. Luckily, Composer using Composer means uh, that we also get all the Drupal dependencies downloaded for us automatically, and we can keep them up to date with a single command. That means one command to install and one command to update. I think that's pretty much a win. So one of the things that we're doing here, though, is we're not installing commerce. We're installing something called Project Base. And if you want to dive a little bit deeper with me here, we can go into GitHub, Drupal Commerce, uh, slash Project Dash Base. And what this is doing, uh, again, for the Drupal folks that are watching this screen that are used to Drush and understanding what Drush means, this is basically the Drush Make template for Drupal 8. Uh, we're using Composer. It's a Composer-based template, and what it does is it, it sets up an entire Drupal site for us. And this is definitely the best practice, and it should probably be the beginning, the root of every Drupal Commerce project that you're working on. And if you're, if you're adding Commerce to an existing site, the, the installation instructions will get you to that point of, of having Composer. And, but we're already assuming, we're always going to be assuming you're going to be using Composer to manage your Drupal site. Um, okay, so now that the command has finished, you'll notice that it's asking us one question. It asks one question. Do you want to remove the existing history? And so the history is something that we don't care about if we're creating a new project. Uh, it, we would care about it if we are a contributor. And if you're a contributor, go for it. Go ahead and keep it. If not, and by the way, we have installation instructions for you as well on the install page that are completely different. Um, but for us, we do want to remove the history. And what this gives us is a my store folder. You can see it right here. Uh, it includes a vendor folder that has all of the composer um, 
dependencies and interdependencies and recursive dependencies, and it has a web folder, which is a full build of Drupal. So if you go and look at the web folder, you can see that it is a Drupal site, and inside the modules folder is a contrib folder that has commerce and address and all of the other things. So basically, Project Base just gives you Drupal core plus everything we just described, and that command does all of that for you all at once. Once we're uh, ready for that, the next step is really to just install it. So to do the installation, you need to match a URL locally to a folder where you just created the My Store folder. Uh, for me, that's pretty simple because we have, uh, I, I've already got this set up, I've already done this a couple times for you. If you haven't done this before, um, We've got some pointers for you on the installation instructions. You can use Drupal VM, Acquia Dev Desktop. Whatever you end up using, you're going to need to basically point uh, a URL, something, localhost, dash something, um, to the web folder that this command downloads. Once you've done that, it's going to take you through the installation process. Let me interrupt myself really quickly here um, and just let you guys know that this is how you get it downloaded. And in the next video, we're going to try to keep it short and sweet. We're going to show you how to install and configure your first store and products. Thanks for listening.